We're excited to have Dr. Marion Walker with us today for our Ask the Expert video series. And Dr. Walker is recently retired from Primary Children's Hospital and the University of Utah in Salt Lake City, and I'm sure they miss you very much. I never know. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also the chair of our medical advisory board. Uh, also with me today is Jennifer Bouchard Johnson, our education manager, and I am Amanda Garzon, director of communications and marketing for the Hydrocephalus Association. And this question comes from a woman named Lisa Marie. And Lisa Marie, thank you for asking this question because I, my daughter sounds very similar to your son, actually. And I think there's this feeling that we're alone and we're not. The question really deals with the correlation between hydrocephalus and epilepsy, particularly absent seizures. And in Lisa Marie's case, her son is 12, has had five brain surgeries um, by the time he was three and does have a VP shunt. My daughter is 14, has had 15 brain surgeries, two VP shunts, has hydrocephalus um, epilepsies and epilepsy, and it really manifests a lot of absent seizures, two grand mal seizures. And we hear this a lot from mm -hmm. support calls we get. My child has um, seizures. I think my kid's the only one. And I actually think that that's probably not the case. I, I feel like we see a lot of kids with epilepsy and hydrocephalus in our community. So what in your experience, Dr. Walker, what is the prevalence? I know we can't give an exact number because we don't have a study, but well, common, it's, it's I would say it's common. Common? Yes. Um, seizures associated with hydrocephalus um, is common. Um, the uh, the reason for those seizures can can vary. Um, it, it could be related to um, the underlying cause of the hydrocephalus. Is there a malformation of the brain? Mm -hmm. Was there an infection that might have created the hydrocephalus and and caused some some seizure foci? Mm -hmm. Was there bleeding that might have done a similar thing? Um, so the underlying cause is more than likely the cause also of the seizure disorder. In the case of absot seizures, uh, it strongly suggests that there is brain malformation mm -hmm. to account for that type of seizure. Uh, there it is possible for the shunt catheter where it enters the cortex of the brain to create enough scar and reaction that that could be a, a, a focus of seizure. That's uncommon, but you can usually diagnose that because an EEG will show that focal point as being the origin of the seizures. So it's, it's common. Um, and, and patients who have hydrocephalus. And, and I do want to take a second, um, just because I think, because we do see it in our population, to uh, talk a little bit about what an absent seizure can look like, because I think parents might not even realize that something's happening. Um, and it can really be that, that spacing out uh, and the child not being responsive, but looking as if everything's fine, sitting there, and they're just kind of spacing out. And it was actually Gabby's teachers that picked up on the absent seizures because she'd be sitting in class looking like she was paying attention, and but spacing out a little. Maybe they'd call her name, and she just was just staring at them, and then they would snap, and she kind of like, you know come back into it um, and be tired afterwards. So I think it's important to for parents to understand what an absence seizure can look like. And did I describe it well, Dr. Walker? Yes, I think that's a, a good description. Also made me think of the way I uh, react when I'm listening to a boring conference lecture. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, they could be spacing out because it's math <laughs> class or they could be spacing out because they're having absence seizures. Uh, but definitely not alone, Lisa Marie, in our community. Now, could this happen with adults as well? Certainly. Um, uh, well, the, the creation of the hydrocephalus can create the seizure disorder. So whatever that, create, whatever that etiology was or that cause uh, can be associated with the seizures. So it doesn't matter child or adult. Um, can still have. So the treatment then is complete. You treat the hydrocephalus, you treat the seizures. Correct. They're two different treatments. Okay. 
So it's important for um, parents or people with seizures to be seen neurology as well as neurosurgery. If they are having seizures, that's certainly true. There's a, there's another underlying question in all this. And Bring it is, out. <laughs> and, and that is, um, are seizures a manifestation of shunt malfunction? Mm. Like, could it be a symptom or, or are you seizing because your shunt is malfunctioning? That's the question. Got it. Uh, and again, uh, in my experience, it's quite uncommon for the seizures to be the presenting symptom of a shunt malfunction. Okay. It certainly can happen. And I have patients that uh, I've seen it in uh, plenty of times, but it's usually associated with other symptoms or signs of shunt malfunction as well. Okay. But it can be uh, confusing, I suspect, for parents mm -hmm. or for adult uh, caregivers to see someone having seizures and one and wondering now is the shunt okay. Mm -hmm. um, so it's certainly worth getting checked out, mm -hmm. especially if there's anything unusual uh, associated with the seizure. Okay. Well, great. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Walker and Lisa Marie. I hope you uh, got a great answer to your question and. Um, if you need any support, we're here for you at the Hydrocephalus Association. We do have some documentation on seizures and hydrocephalus. And you can also look in our hydrocephalus resource library for um, other articles on seizure. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walker. You're, you're welcome.